All right, bet, bet, bet. So we back, 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 man, with another episode, man. Stir, how you feeling, dog? I'm good, brother. I'm good. We back at it again, episode two. I don't know if the people thought we was coming back so fast, but we back again. And it's good to be back in the building, man. Back in the studio. Feels amazing, man. Back in the yo. Man, listen, I got I got something I want to get off my chest today, Stir. Can I do I have permission to, to do get right do, real brother. quick, man? I never stop a brother's creativity. Man, listen, I need y'all to listen to me right quick, man. <laughs> it just some things were on my spirit today, right? I'm going to give you guys a word and the title of this word, you know what I'm saying? The moniker is mm -hmm. intention. Okay. You're getting deep early. Intention. Intention. Yeah. Okay. Or, or so you think. So <clears throat> to start this off, <laughs> getting older sucks, okay. but not because of reasons you may think. Right. It's not all the It's not all the bills or independence. It's not the anxiousness surrounding marriage and children. It's not the physical aches and the bodily changes. It's none of the reasons that you're really thinking. Okay. Getting older sucks because everything that used to come easy as a byproduct of living is now required. Now requires you to be intentional to actually get it. Mm-hmm. At 21, if a girl likes you and thinks you're cute, yeah, that's enough. At 28, she's got to know your age, wage. Can you pay your bills? Are you looking for a wife? And in three years, where do you see us? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Being intentional about life requires a little bit of endurance because now I got to pay for things I never even thought about paying for, like vegetables, medical bills, speeding tickets, health insurance. I just paid a ticket. Mm. <laughs> At 21, I said yes to every move and my friends were right there with me. At 25, if I can't get a two week notice, you will not fucking see me. Right, we're going we to bleep that out. We're going to bleep that out. <laughs> yes. This guy at school was athletic, the coolest dude ever, the best dressed hands down. Uh huh. But now he had Chick fil A. I ordered the bacon cheese with a little tater tot hash brown. <laughs> I remember I was in love with Keisha's body. Keisha's body was fire. Keisha. But she was always looking at the tall ball players like Daquan and Marquise. <laughs> but since then, she's lost a side tooth, gained 30 pounds, and now she got the nerve to start looking at me. Mm. Wow. So remember, any setbacks you may face, you can always fix it. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, anything I just named, you can avoid it completely. You can avoid everything that I just mentioned. If you pay your bills, hit the gym, write down your goals, and start every day with intention. Snap Ooh, it up for my dog. Look at the snaps on the camera. And with that being said, <laughs> welcome back to the Epicenter <laughs> Podcast, the Epicenter Show, all of that and more, man. My co host Girls like Sterl and it's in your the boy. building. And it's your boy King Brill, man. We back, man. And in we the back, back, we got Jay Pank. Pank. You know what I mean? Pank. Working them cameras. Pank, we appreciate you, man. We appreciate you so much. So much, man. How you feeling, Sterl, man? You good, man? So, How you feeling? I, I'm feeling pretty good, man. I just got that word off my chest. Just, I feel like a weight has been lifted. Brill ain't wrote a poem since like third grade, and he decided to come today to bring a poem. Oh no 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 no! I, poetry is a regular part of my life. <laughs> poetry is a regular part. You of a modern my day life. Langston Hughes, huh? Speaking of poetry, mm. the re how I get this practice, I only get this practice of poetry probably once or twice a year. Okay, and what time is that? Birthdays, maybe you write a little something on the card. Yeah, and the other time of the year, go ahead and say it. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. And Valentine's Day. February 14th. Every year, but somehow, same time every year. Yeah. But somehow, niggas always end up unprepared. Yeah. So we're doing this episode today, y'all, to preface y'all for all the fellas watching, even for the ladies, because y'all got preparational things to do too. It's yep. coming up. It's three weeks out right now. It's three weeks. It's actually two weeks and six days. Two but weeks we're doing days. this episode because we want to give y'all a preface. We want to get the fellas prepared. Ladies, y'all got some things to do, too. So should we start with the ladies and the things they have to do? Oh, OK. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Because now we're, we're not we're not speaking from a woman's body. We're not speaking from a woman's perspective because obviously we are, we are men. I don't know why he's taking this right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm, 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 <laughs> only because I had to say Valentine's Day, ladies, nails. You know, that's one of the things they do. They get nails and toes okay. done. Hair. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. The waxes. You know waxes. what I'm saying? Waxes. It's, I'm not. I'm not even gonna extra extrapolate on that. Just waxes are keen, man. They are keen, and y'all know man. why. The wax place is about to be bo booked and busy right now. From this from this day on to Valentine's Day, the nail place is about to be booming. Because ladies, y'all know y'all like to get prepared. You're going on dates. You're going out. You're having fun with your with your significant other or whoever you may choose to let you 
let them take you on a date and it's coming man valentine's day is on the way so there's some things that y'all got to do and some things we got to do this is the natural way of february that's how it goes that's how it goes man you know I, my best wishes to the girl whose shaving schedule misaligns <laughs> and she won't be able to have enough hair to get a wax in time for valentine's day so mm. she's got to shave again and she got to be a little prickly she's got to be prickly man see look you should have been lining up your shaving schedule this whole time man That's, at the beginning of january <laughs> should have said well february is here let me figure out every two weeks i'm gonna do this here and then go to the to the lady bushy and say take it all off of me right now <laughs> Take it all off. It's time for Valentine's Day. I'm trying to feel like a, what is it, uh, uh, fall off the bone They'll ribs. Fall off the bone. I'm trying to be fall off the bone ribs on February 14th because it's going down. It's going down. You feel man. Me? It's going down. You know what's so crazy? So shout out to y'all. You know what's crazy? So we talked about the ladies, right? Mm-hmm. So now the fellas, man. We got stuff to do. We got stuff to do. Fellas, this, this, is, this is my call. This is like the little back signal. If the purge, mm. this is that little, uh, mm-hmm. uh, if you have not scheduled the reservation <sighs> yet, you have time. You have a little bit of time. You don't right. have the A-list restaurants around the city. By the time you see this, you probably won't be able to get there. But you have right. time for the B class. Do it now. Don't be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that later. Nah. Do it now. Paul, keep the podcast playing because you can swipe up and keep the podcast. Yeah. Keep it playing. Swipe up. And Go then, to your favorite restaurant.com. Exactly. And find that reservation because Please. the thing is, every fella right now is thinking the same. It's just like Christmas. I thought Christmas... Like, I, you know, last minute shopping. Okay. I went to Burlington just gra- trying to grab some stuff for the family. I go in there, bro. The line is wrapped all the way around it. Through. I'm like, well, I'm not the only one who was last minute thinking about getting something for, for Burlington. Christmas. That's the spot, ain't it? Burlington is literally where you can find. You go in there not knowing what you want. You leave it with a painting. You leave it with a plant. You leave it with a nice pair of pants. Mm-hmm. You might leave it with a blazer. Decor. Bet Burlington got everything, bro. It's, this, it's a crazy mess when you walk in there. Yeah. As far as how it looks, it's literally like. I don't even know, like a smorgasbord of everything. You could, they got candy, they got phone charges, they got, uh, I mean, anything you could imagine they got in Berlin. Then they got mm-hmm. the clearance section that really has everything. But Burlington, if you need a last minute gift, I'm all, I'm a, I'm a Burlington uh, mm-hmm. warrior, bro. I go in there and fight to the death. You I go, go in there and like, fight to yeah, the yeah, death. Yeah, yeah, baby. I was looking around your apartment. I just think that this <laughs> plant right here would be beautiful. Oh, right this here. is so thoughtful. Mm-hmm. I always, look, I always wanted Burl- a plant. Rip that Burlington tag up off of that. Uh, tell you got it at Home Goods or something. You know, to make it sound expensive. <laughs> Home goods is that an elite store? That's an elite. I mean, it's one of those ones you throw out and people are like, oh, you you smart. Okay, you be thinking when you shop. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I went to Burlington. Oh, but it's crazy. It's Burlington Coat Factory. <laughs> they uh-huh. had everything but coats in there. That's the crazy part. You know what's crazy, man? Uh, so I'm not I'm not in the streets at all, right? Mm-hmm. But I have an ear to the streets. You know okay. what I'm saying? I have, I have I have homeboys who phone me in and tell mm. me what's going on in the streets. So I, I know what's going on down the street, up the street, down the road, all that and such. Got you. Man, um, there's this something crazy about this time of year mm. that, that, that the, the intel that I'm getting tells me about. It says that, you know, the, the price is at an all-time high. It's an in inflation <laughs> right now because the ladies are locking it down. And whoever dived in the DMs, whoever got that number impressed right before Christmas, maybe they bought the Christmas gift a little early, uh-huh. right? But because they bought that Christmas gift a little early, they've been locked in, booed mm. up. I done seen a couple probates on a couple stories, and I know that relationship <laughs> ain't last long because you were talking to somebody different at homecoming. But, right, right, but, right. But now I think they go, they're on their best behavior up and through Valentine's Day because they want that day to be occupied by a special somebody. The women done got low, huh? That, they done got low, They man. done got low. They ain't they posting too much crazy stuff. They ain't posting, I don't nothing. need a nigga. You ain't gonna see too many of them posts right now. What, what, what are those say pages? Say it again, boy. You ain't gonna see too many of them. I don't need a nigga, fuck niggas, all that. You gonna see man. them right now. For the next three weeks, it's gonna be quiet. What are those pages the, with, with, with the white background? I haven't seen a Justin LeBoy post, mm. uh, a, a niggas be broke post, right. a niggas be broke. Okay, I haven't I haven't seen any of those posts lately, man. They know, they know when to do it. They know when to lock it down and like, all right, I gotta, I gotta be on my best behavior right now. If I wanna, mm. you know what I'm saying? I've been seeing the sweetest, most adorable TikToks, oh. the most the most man proud TikToks. I love my man. <laughs> And men are amazing black men kings i've seen nothing but that and i will say i appreciate it but we know it's gonna be a different to- t- uh, story call um come summertime so yeah you know it is what it is so look fellas all we saying is prepare for valentine's day ladies prepare for valentine's day and then enjoy please. your valentine's day please if you gotta get low with somebody do what you gotta do if you're gonna be public with them be careful because these are the times you post and somebody might end up in your comment like who was it your dms Ooh, that's tough I'm going to just say it, fellas. Do not disturb. Put that phone on. Do not disturb. Do not disturb. And and rock out. 
because you don't want you know what i'm saying don't be careful what you post mm -hmm. you know some people gonna be posting the hand might post the restaurant it's one of those one of those things you just get low sometimes now if you want to uh commit a relationship more power to you have a great valentine's day do what you do but for my fellas who got to get low do what you got to do too man it's valentine's day and and anything goes you know what the crazy part is i still like posting the hand the toes right the just butt, to keep them like guessing a, like a talk no like a talk not even to keep them guessing they they know who i'm coming with they know oh, how i'm coming right but it just I, you know I, it feels i feel like <laughs> i fit in with the rest of you sick toxic people <laughs> and it makes me feel like one of you guys but niggas mm. know how i'm coming so uh we right, gonna, with right. that being said we got a lot of sports to talk about today this is an for interesting sure. time in the sports world right for now, sure bro. for sure it, it, man this i i don't man basketball football so much going on so Let's talk about the GOAT. The GOAT. LBJ, the baby. Man. LBJ. So, if in case you didn't know, in case you were living under the rock, well, I understand most people don't watch the NBA until All-Star break. Let's be right, real. That's right. what it counts, right? But in case you were sleeping under the rock and you didn't know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar scored 38,387 career points and has held the all-time scoring record since April 1984, eight wow. months before LeBron James was even born. But wow. now LeBron James is currently averaging just over 30 points a game. And at the time you guys are probably hearing this, he's probably only 178 points away from claiming the record. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? At the time of this recording, it's 178. By the time you guys hear this on Tuesday, it'll probably be less than 100. Wow. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. How do we feel? Do we have a unanimous Bron is the GOAT situation? I'm a huge Bron fan, bro, and okay. I've been one. And right now, like I, I tell people right now, my team is Charlotte. I'm Obviously, we're from the city, so mm -hmm. I'm a Charlotte Hornets guy. We're terrible, but I ride with my guys. Nonetheless, <laughs> I'm a LeBron fan, so wherever okay. he goes, I'm there. I'm a Cavs fan in that 2015-16 era, some of the best playoff games ever with Steph, and you know, and they was going Golden State versus uh, Cleveland. Loved those games. And then when he went to the Lakers, I follow, I follow him to the Lakers, bro. I'm an I'm a LBJ fan, man. hard down. I feel hard like my, my fanship, I think I said this a little bit on the last podcast, man. I think my fanship is just a, a, a couple, two seasons more seasoned than yours is. Because I'm a Carmelo Anthony fan, and we know that mm. he's kind of in limbo out of the league. He probably won't right. come back and have a real dominant role, so he's pretty right. much done for real. The best years, best of his years are behind him. For Hall sure. of Fame legend. LeBron said he's really just trying to play with Bron that first year. Now, we know he can keep right. going. He's scoring 30, 40 every other night nowadays. Crazy. But he might retire early, so... We're in Charlotte. I'm waiting for the Hornets to do at least make the playoffs. Y'all don't got to win anything. If you make the playoffs, I'm buying everybody's jersey. I'm pumping the team. Yeah, I'm talking bro. cash. For Somebody, sure. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to be that fan. And you know what's funny about basketball? Charlotte Hornets probably have the most infamous jersey of all time. Like the starter jacket, the okay. jersey. People love wearing that. You remember when the yeah. Hornets went to New Orleans for a brief period of time when we had the Bobcats? <clears throat> yeah. Horrible time for Charlotte history when we had the Bobcats. The Bobcats I'm sorry. was terrible. Bro. We were like literally scum of the earth trash. And then we brought the Hornets back. So I think that camaraderie, those people from the 90s and 80s that have Charlatans that have been here, mm -hmm. that was good for us. Absolutely. And that's literally, like I said, it's probably like everybody you know had that starter jacket back in the day or that jersey, Dale Curry, Steph Curry's dad for the people who don't know. Charlotte legend, bro. I have a Dale sure. Curry jersey. You know you what I'm saying? One? Yeah, I got one. That's awesome. Number thirty, and it's like that's a that's a Charlotte staple. That's a, the Hornets are one of the things we don't can't afford to lose. Even though we're trash, it is good. Like I see a lot of girls at the Charlotte Hornets games nowadays. Probably don't Ooh. know nothing about the Hornets, but it be a lot of y'all at the Hornets games. So they supporting. They supporting. They supporting. Uh, they supporting. Y'all got love sponsors, the Hornets. man. <laughs> y'all got sponsors, man. How y'all getting in them Hornets games? Y'all got yeah, how y'all getting sponsors, in them, man. How y'all getting in them Hornets games? That's what I be wondering. They be low too. They be like they be low. They don't be with, in, with the, in, with the in, <laughs> They don't be up in the in the nosebleeds. They be down in like the section one hundred, one ten. Man, I don't see the price. They don't be posting, tickets, man. They don't be posting right, uh, right. The price, they don't be posting what they with. But I see y'all. At the Hornets game, keep supporting. Hell yeah. I ain't gonna say too much. Y'all know why y'all be there. The key is we gonna wait till a free throw get shot, and then we gonna see if it's a, <laughs> if it's a double take back mm -hmm. over there. We know mm -hmm. who we know who's your sponsor. You feel me? We know exactly who your sponsor is for sure, man. But we love the Hornets. Aside Absolutely. from that, back on our LeBron topic, like we said, I'm a huge LeBron fan. He's gonna do it, bro. He's gonna, obviously gonna knock those numbers down. I think it's great that he's playing at this age, at this capacity. He's still a name in the NBA. And I think one of the players, I can't remember his name, came up to him and was like, yo, you played my dad in your first game. You know what I'm saying? You I saw think that? several players. Several players. That, yeah. I don't know who said that, yeah. but it's several players' father he has. It was like a little Instagram post that right. showed it all, man. And that's crazy. He's still rocking and still dominating the league to an extent. So I think that just speaks numbers. People who don't like LeBron just hate on LeBron. Like, there's no reason not to like, bro. Yeah. He does what he got to do. He can play. 
it's like you just got an ultimatum against him, must be. I think a lot of people, a lot of people hated LeBron early, mm-hmm. but now they really can't deny his greatness. So right. now the only argument left is that Jordan ghost that people have mm-hmm. him chasing. And maybe I give too much credit for longevity, but I just think that LeBron Yeah, longevity him. is something that he's really putting into a new perspective. Like, yeah. I don't think anybody ever thought of playing that long at that level. And going on tears, 30, 40, 31, yeah. 25, 30, 40, 20, Jordan like, came back with the Wizards, but he like, it wasn't Chicago Bulls, definitely Jordan. Wasn't, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It was still Jordan, respect. But he got crossed by, by AI. He got, you know what I'm saying? Was, he got, oh, he got crossed by AI when he was still with the Bulls. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, yeah. He, was, he was definitely. I'm pretty sure he got crossed again with the Wizards, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, yeah that was. <laughs> nonetheless, <laughs> you just faded. Jordan is never coming on the podcast. <laughs> He's competitive. He's Jordan, never. Ain't a bro. Hey, Listen, my bad team. My bad team. <laughs> it, was, it was at that moment. <laughs> That moment, he said, "You yeah, know, he don't like cut trash talk. Cut he don't like trash. My bad, Jordan. We need you on here, man. We need you on the pod. Root to the breast. Hey, root, root. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta throw that out. Hey, good root to the breast. Throw, throw that out, man. All right. So what we got next? What we got next, man? We have. Uh, in case you guys didn't know, um, or somewhere under a rock, somebody <laughs> has to have told you about the legendary uh, three seasons that Deion Sanders spent at Jackson State. He is now uh, to him. with the uh, Colorado. What is that mascot? Buffs. 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 Buffaloes, right? but it's buffs. Buffs. Okay, smooth. So now. Um, in step, in line, mm-hmm. uh, one band, one sound. Ed Reed, all, a Hall of Fame defensive back. Yep. You know, champion defensive back, one of the best safeties to ever play in the NFL. Ed Reed was um was in deep negotiations with going with uh with uh as the head coach to Bethune Cookman College. Okay. However, Shout out BCU. After only like twenty five days of this, you know, frantic dance and excitement, mm-hmm. they've decided that uh, they were no longer going to go with him as the head coach. And have the the world has been spinning ever since, man. So he got on live and basically talked about you know different things about how the campus just was just unsatisfactory, man, and how things like buildings were filled with trash, fences were broken. They had a track team that ran on grass. Gr- ran on grass is actually good for you, but you can't have a home meet yeah. without a full track. They probably had eighty hours of track. They practice at a high school. They practice at, at a high school. Yeah. And unfortunately, bro, y'all went to a PWI. This is the reality for a lot of HBCUs. We are super underfunded. We are like disadvantaged to an extent that you wouldn't even know until you go to a, a facility like y'all's and you go to Charlotte or you go somewhere and you look at y'all's campus and y'all look at ours. It's like night and day difference. And it's crazy. But that's unfortunately, that's how it is. And most HBCUs are in the hood. So we got a lot of uphill battles that we fight as HBCUs just to get the basics you know what i'm saying so Ed Reed probably went there from you know an nfl standpoint and goes onto this campus i'm not sure what college he went to miami miami the U. Oh, you when go, he to, went to the u when it was the u you go to the u and <laughs> you go to bethune cookman and you're looking at the campus life and you're like what is this this is y'all's calf this is the track this is the football field y'all don't have a this y'all don't have a that it's totally different but nonetheless yeah he went and and saw the campus and you know, was public about how he felt about how it looked. So let me ask you this. Um, we went to uh, University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And it, just for y'all watching out there, that is a PWI, but it is the best campus <laughs> in probably the Southeast. Yeah. Probably on fact. this side of the globe, just to be honest. I in terms of a one lot. school, I heard man, that a lot. We got the best campus. We got two swimming pools on campus. Anyway, that's not important. You went to South Carolina State, man. So yep. how, tell me from an HBCU standpoint, you actually been there. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you, got, you guys, especially with HBCU, you're just more political, involved with the campus because you care more. It's a little bit connected to home. It's more mm-hmm. um, of your heritage and history there. Right. Where do you feel like this problem stems from, man? Because that, that is a bad situation, man. It's and money. I read some things. It's money. and But where does the money problem start? Um, it probably starts where it ends and ends where it starts with the board of trustees, with the higher ups, with the people Ooh. that we have no connection to like yeah. that at state. Like we can't, I mean, we can, but it's hard to get to the president unless he makes himself available, unless okay. he's on the campus walking around and being personable. Yeah. It's hard to get into his office because you got to go through his assistant, then his uh, executive assistant. Then you got to go through the secretary. And, you know, it's a it's a leaderboard of people you got to talk to before you can get to the people that actually make a change or sign a paper. Mm-hmm. So at, at these colleges, and it's just been that way for so long, nobody... You know, it just becomes natural, and it's something you're used to. It's like, oh, the, the cat food bad, uh, you know, whatever. This we don't have a a, a, a door on this building here. Oh, it's whatever. Oh, this this uh this uh fence is knocked down. Uh, who gonna fix it? You know, we can write petitions and we can do all that, but like the action that comes about it, 
you got to take it to the streets like Bethune Cookman did. And they have been on campus protesting about every they've been on campus protesting about their facility i saw the players had a petition to actually bring him back as yeah coach. yeah and i mean i'm talking about the student body has been walking the streets so they didn't go to class wow yeah they're, they're protesting like during the school day walking the streets of the campus with signs like old school protesting wow. because they're upset about the you know it, it it's crazy that this situation that ed reed had to be the thing to the strike the camels back yeah but something had to happen for their voices to be heard. And now they were on with Roland Martin. News um, shows and stations had picked up this story. And it's bigger than Ed Reed now. It's generally yeah, it's, it's the, Jesus. the problematic, systematic oppression of HBCUs as a whole. And that's what I think the question is for most of us watching, man. Mm -hmm. uh, just black people as a whole that are interested in this, and they all we all should be uh, to a point. At, we want to know where it starts because a lot of these people we don't know their names. Like Deion right. Sanders left Jackson State, so everybody, well, not everybody, there's a select few people who feel like, oh, he should have done this, he could have done this, he said he was gonna do this, he didn't do that, da, da 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 da. But no one talks about when he his office has been robbed and how he's had mm -hmm. to you know fight through these different things so i've done some research on bethune cookman to kind of see you know how much how deep this goes i wanted to be a little bit educated so i can get an opinion on what kind of where this starts and what i found was crazy man listen what to you this y'all so you got? check this out so i was thinking okay so ed reed said verbatim that in the live that he did you can look it up on youtube there were two you know decent sized buildings decent sized one and two story buildings that were filled with trash weren't currently being utilized by Bethune Cookman. Mm -hmm. But if you're not using two buildings, you know, maybe you're not underfunded because I'm thinking underfunded, maybe you exercise everything you possibly can, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I did some research and just typed in, you know, how do they get paid? You know, how, does, how do they split the university? Because Bethune Cookman is a private university, if I'm not mistaken. It is. Um, and it said that in 2021, they got a federal loan, huge federal loan of $108 million in 2021. But that money was not able to go to actually repairing the campus or doing anything for the campus because it went to it was used to pay the debt off from mm -hmm. another operation that they had um, to actually build a dorm. And uh, so it says uh, and on February 14th. I'm sorry, on February 2014, there was an agreement made uh, that called for the school to pay a monthly installment of 2000. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Two hundred fifty thousand yeah, dollars which a is a quarter difference. million dollars right. every single month to a company Jeez, called sense. tg quantum for a new dorm reconstruction project now it was supposed to be less than 100 million but we all understand well we all have some small understanding of commercial real estate or real estate and inflate uh, not inflation but uh uh interest okay interest so by the time that they were on track to pay it off it was going to be well over 300 million dollars spent mm-hmm but here's the thing about that. So you think a $300 million is expensive, but it's a dorm. I'm just glad they put money into it. This is the crazy part that threw me on a little loop. The president, the president at the time, Edison Jackson, claimed that the signature on the agreement to spend that much money on the project in 2014 claimed that the signature on the project, on the agreement, wasn't his. Mm. He said it wasn't his. They had, you know, uh, notaries, look, not lo notaries, but whoever those examiners are examining right. the forgery and if it was a forgery and if it was true, mm, whether it was mm, false. Mm. And guess what? The board still decided to go through with the plans. They they literally pushed it and said, we're going to spend this anyway. Right. So, you know, me reading that, I, th this is the only thing I can think of when I look at all the information I do with research. I'm thinking, yo, you know. With the whole air re situation, this thing has been going on for a long time. It's right. one a.m. Somebody's downstairs is with the lights <laughs> off. They got their hand in the cookie jar. Ed re came down with a flashlight on Instagram Live, and they said, "You know what? Get the fuck out!" <laughs> yeah, get, get the fuck out. Look, get out. Bethune Cookman has rocked on a very <laughs> low profile for a long time. You don't hear about time. them in the HBCU uh, world as much mm -hmm. in the bad light. In a bad light. You hear about them for the marching band. You hear about the campus. You hear about uh, Bethune. You hear about them on the video game because they're like one of the first colleges to come up back on NCAA when you're uh, right. on Madden when you make a player and you choose what college. Bethune yeah. Cookman College. But, right. <laughs> and they got a lot of notable people in their history. Uh, yeah. What is it? Mary Bethune. It's Ma the Bethune who's named after. Okay. She's a real notable you know person in black history mm. so they have an elite history and they have elite graduates but Sheesh. when this stuff comes out it gets fishy bro because in south carolina state when i was there in 2014 from 2014 to 2019 i had a different president every single year every year every year and the crazy thing is as presidents of universities they usually stay until they die they usually stay 
at that university because they get paid so well. They've been there. They're usually graduates of the university. Sometimes they get people from other places. But they stay there for like 20, 30 years. If they leave a year after they get hired, something is going wrong. Something is going wrong. And it's usually nine out of ten times consistent about something being wrong with the money. With the money. With the money. That's what it, I think it'd be very interesting. I'm glad that Eric kind of helped pull covers back. I yeah, wish Dion would go back. Did. Not wish Dion because he's obviously got his own goals in mind. I don't want right. to speak for his goals or try to put him on the direction. But I would have loved if he could have, in his absence, could have just like un- uncovered a lot more of things. light on it because Man. Yo, he said that they were selling out stadiums, but you know the attendance clicker would only have about account for like half of the money. Only accounted for half of it, bro. And he spent his salary to repair a stadium. Right. It, it's just it's just weird to me. You know what's crazy? Uh, and um, I, I don't want to take this time. I want to say that, you know, definitely support HBCUs. HBCUs, HBCUs are a great choice right. to go for college and university. Great education, great history, yep. great culture. But um, I can't say that this was the first time I've heard of this, man. I, I didn't I didn't haven't heard about South Carolina State having things like this, but I have heard about the HUs, both of them, mm. both a little bit less Hampton, but a lot more Howard, man. And then one of the most the, notable like, dorms H- and stuff. Yeah. It's, one of the most notable colleges, not to cut you off, Morris Brown College. You seen Drumline? All y'all seen Drumline? Yeah. That was a real college that Atlanta A and T was the fake one that Devin Miles, Nick Cannon played with. Morris Brown College, NBC was like the first Southern University of Jackson yeah. State band wise, bro. They had an elite campus there in the middle of the AUC where Atlanta is, where Morehouse, Spelman, uh, Clark, Atlanta, and it was Morris Brown. Yeah. Elite college, elite graduates. An elite band. Mm-hmm. That's the reason they were in Drumline. Small history, history fact: My band people, Southern University was supposed to be the band that played Atlanta A and T. I thought so, that was North Carolina A and T. Was that bullshit? Because the colors were the same. They're the it same, was, but in the movies, Atlanta A and T. That's why I, I thought they came from. They didn't come from North Carolina A and T. Maybe I just wanted to. I mean, sort of. That band actually going into it, behind the scenes. That band consisted of a lot of people from like Fam, Bethune, South Carolina State. Mm. A lot of people came in and they made that band. It was a fake band. So if you watch it, you'll see intricacies and di- different marching styles and stuff like that. Real band head stuff. So yeah. that band was just made okay. up of a bunch of band people that were able to be in the movie. Morris Brown College, that was their actual band. Was different band director. It wasn't Jay Anthony Brown. He isn't their band director. But that is their band. They were that size. They were playing at that capacity. They were uh, The Olympics were hosted at... at um, at Morris Brown in 1999. Wow, that's yeah. History. So that's, that's officially closed now, right? No, they just reopened. So was, was that why they were able to be in Drumline? They were able to be in it because they were an elite college at that time. They had the Olympics there in 99. That movie came out in 2002. Jesus Christ. They closed down, I think, like 2004 due to accreditation problems. SACS, the big accreditation <sighs> agency that comes and checks on each college, they came to Morris Brown, found a bunch of money issues, and shut it down. Nobody could graduate from there. They shut the campus down. The campus turned into literally just a an open field it's got it had graffiti all over it the field was trashed i mean it, like if you look on youtube you can find videos of people exploring morris brown and it's just like trash and isn't like it was a dead campus and then you know we had uh agp there 16 yeah, yeah. and they were using <laughs> it for that but nobody was taking classes but now kevin james he's actually a bro too mm-hmm. he just um he's been doing a lot of work to reset the program shout out to him uh, he's been doing a lot of work to reset it they're back accredited they have professors they have students they have a band they, they're doing everything they're back on the map so thank god for that but it took wow. from about 2004 or 5 to 2021 20, 22 23 to get back so almost 15 16 years something like that and that just shows and it was due to accreditation problems due to money problems due to just a bad system bro yeah it's, it's sick like- it's like it's crazy because you really don't we really don't know where to take this blame like what do mm-hmm. we do we Red is it, are we finger. fighting the state are we fighting the higher up the president you know mm-hmm. the highest I, I assume black people associated with the college or do we is it lower down is it higher up i mean I, I don't it's know, hard man, man. It's black people just taking from black people i guess and it's, it's sad because these are our universities these and but our then we got this bad man. history associated with it but nonetheless prayers and thoughts to uh, Bethune Cookman and everybody involved in that. Shout out to the students that are protesting. Shout out Ed Reed for pulling back the covers, like you said. Shout out to everybody that's trying to make a change at Bethune. Hopefully, he I, I hope he gets his job back, bro, because he he is invested in those students and those players, and they want him there. And that should speak volumes on itself. If they want you at their school, exactly. I saw something that said he done more in three weeks than they've done in like five years. You know what that's I'm saying sad, on their campus. Man. So. You know, prayers and thoughts to him and his family and Bethune and everybody. And I hope they are able to like work that out and figure it out. But we will see soon because it's, it's some stuff getting uncovered. And if sure. not them, another HBCU. Bro. Yeah, somebody least, pick him up. Somebody pick HBCU. him up, man. 
He's ready to coach. He's ready to be with, with the kids. And it's good. Like, that Dion thing can happen with more than just Dion. Absolutely. There's so many people that graduated from – well, South Carolina State has the most NFL um, um, people to come from the school. Darius Leonard, my profile, mm -hmm. him. I mean, it can go down the list. We have, um, I think, the top number of NFL uh, pipeline, pipeline players. Pipeline players, Jeez. yeah. From HBCU. So. That's wonderful, man. Shout out to the HBCUs out there, man. We praying for y'all. We praying for us. Let's hope it gets better. Sheesh, man. Sheesh, man. Where do we go from here, man? We got big. <laughs> yeah, we got, yeah that's, I know that was pretty daunting. No, that no, was no, no, no. It was important. It was important. <laughs> it's important. Though, if you came for, sure. for the mess, then that definitely wasn't it. But your segment is now. If you mm -hmm. came for the mess, man, that was more for the, the intellectuals who actually care about important stuff and we black here. people and whatnot. We here. But if you want the mess, man, Ben Simmons just took his engagement ring. Oh, He, he just <laughs> didn't take it. He wanted it back. He wants that thing back. From his ex fiance, man. Start, I think it's start, like 80000 you? 80,000? I think it was something like that. What, what, how do you, okay, let me paint this picture. So you, you're you in the league. You're Ben Simmons. You got this name. You're going through all of this, you know, with your back, playing, da 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 this. Mm -hmm. You can't shoot, mm -hmm. stuff like that, man. You break up with this shorty engagement. You thought it was forever. For some <laughs> reason, maybe maybe because someone, no, someone mentioned you near a court case. Some, maybe that was why. You know, I don't know that. Mm -hmm. That's all allegations. Don't let me, you know. Mm-hmm. You get in your mind. I didn't even think about that. You know, hey, man, listen, you know, it, we don't have the full story. We just have the allegations. But allegations. when you're close, so you can make sense of whether it's BS or whatever. Right, oh, that, that right. makes sense. Um, so, yeah, he wants his ring back. What do you stand at with taking things back from people that you were once with? That's the Indian game. Ex thing. Expensive things at that. Expensive. Um, <sighs> this ain't a teddy bear from Walmart. Right, right, right. I'm not, So, me, I've never been like, give me that back. Now, mind you, I never spent that much on one person. Mm -hmm. Now, I was listening to another podcast, and they were talking about it, and they were saying, they made a good point. Sh you shout them out. We don't want to be those people. Joe Button. Who, okay, Joe Button. Shout Bu out Joe Button. We, we don't, I know, uh, I listened to this podcast, uh, uh, It's Up Their Podcast, Big Loon. He was like, oh, they, they referencing, but they ain't going to say the uh, name. So, we, I don't ever want to be, yeah. I, I listened to Joe Button, the pod father. Shout out Joe Button and the whole team. They were talking about it, and they made a good point, and I heard this morning. They said, when you give somebody an engagement ring, it's not a gift. I'm giving you this because we have verbally contracted to Absolutely. be in a relationship. And this is almost like a signature. This is almost like I'm giving you this as a, almost like a signature. Absolutely. It's not a gift. I'm giving you this in lieu that we get married. So if we don't get married, I can understand him wanting to get back to an extent because it's not a gift. Now, I, when you was asking me, I've given gifts to you know saying past exes and stuff i'm not never asking for it back because i bought it for you as a gift mm. if i'm giving you something as a verbal contract or i'm giving you something as a uh, a piece of something that means that we're going to do something from this and that this doesn't happen then i low-key feel like i should be able to take that back i understand the girls bro. is gonna be hot about this they are gonna be hot about it but i <laughs> They're mean gonna be hot. i think but this is this is what i this is what i they, there's an old folk t not folk tale but there's a saying <laughs> i think it might be confucius so you know oh, cite God. me cite me google me you know what i'm saying open uh -huh. another tab and google me and see if it's right sure. it says he who thinks he knows everything about women knows nothing about women and i don't so i don't want to abide by that you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i don't believe in that because i think i know a fair amount about the psyche of women for sure i think when a woman's truly if she was really into it with you right and she was truly had a heart in it. When she truly pulls her heart out, mm. she'll throw that engagement ring back at you. And she's like, when she throws that shit back, she doesn't. She she's good. She doesn't want you. She's no more. over. It's, it. it's cut cord emotionally. It's all professionalism when you talk to her. But I think how, if, how often does that happen though? I, I, I Where mean, it's a clean cut, like we're breaking up, and there's nothing. From I think it. when the when the damage is done is done when it's done done is done mm -hmm. but i feel like there's a hefty amount of ladies there especially if there's not how many people are engaged or get proposed to by ben simmons mm. so i think if it's an eighty thousand dollar ring and you know you looking at this rock it's eighty thousand dollars how and you made me mad <laughs> right I'm gonna take this ring, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I might not be done with you, but I'm I'm gonna take this ring because I this shit, listen, I'm just gonna buy they me something to anyway. It's it's about the bread, bro. Or it's either he she's not done with him, which I don't which could be a thing, or I just wanna keep the bread just she to piss you off more, man. Let's, she wanna keep that bread. She wanna keep the bread. And she's probably trying to be facetious, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like I'm gonna make you you know what I'm saying? Girls is never like they never give us the benefit of the doubt and just be like, you know what? You bought it, I'm gonna give it back. How often does that happen? That never happens. Man, so listen, I dude. feel him on it, like he has a good point. Is he taking it to court and all that stuff? Is he taking it like legal matters to do this? Or? That part, I don't know because it is the NBA season. I'm not sure how right, daunting right. it is to have to go to court 
yeah. during the season that's yeah. probably pretty tough man to even to even be he probably isn't there to really stand on hey give me the ring back right. it's like give me the ring back i gotta get on the flight 25 mm -hmm. minutes so she really just got us oh i don't know where it's at i think it's uh no, right. da, da, da. and she <laughs> keeps saying that for years until she pawned it and, <laughs> and melted down and she got, whatever the case man i feel it's bad crazy, for bro though that's why i mean you just got to make sure it's the right one you know what i'm saying you got and i know that's hard to, as fellas it's hard for us to figure out if this is the right one and you take we take and that's that's the crazy part ladies that you might understand we take a risk Huge putting risk. you as all right i'm i'm dropping all my marbles on this one and, and we hope and we pray that this ends up being the right one you know what I'm saying? Because well, it's a huge risk, bro. Because when it ends, there are rare, there are rare uh, exceptions to this rule. But when it ends, it is almost always, from the public opinion, the man's fault. Yeah, like and eighty percent of divorces are done by women. I'm I've heard somebody that. say that. It, it's true. Is that, that's true. Women be checked out, bro. If you think about it, women be checked out way before. And they, if you ask, I mean, like literally, I was out. I think this past weekend, and, and you know, I ran into a couple of girls, and like they talk about their relationship. I broke up with him. I broke most. It's rare you hear a dude break up with a girl. Dudes will stay. Yeah. Unless it's Niggas. something. You know one reason we won't stay. It's something you know what'll happen that'll yeah. make us like we out. But most times, you rarely hear a dude saying, I'm breaking up where I'm out. Girls will leave at any inconvenience, almost, it seems. I don't know if it's any inconvenience, but I, I think that I think there's a reason why. that. Let me justify the 80%, because I think it's a real reason. Okay. If we talk about marriages, because we can't really, right, right. Things, we can't really divorces. judge that. Divorce is not like divorces, regular stuff. The, I think one of the only reasons why... Why uh, women leave divorces more than men is because most men, if we, if we would have just assumed that they're they're making somewhat more money than the girl, say, yeah. mm -hmm. they're not trying to take that haircut. That they're not trying to take that pay cut, man. They, you know what I'm saying? Child support from the kids could possibly mm -hmm. happen. You two, three kids, married, divorce. You yeah. like, man, listen, I ain't stay with this girl that I hate or lose forty percent of my paycheck. Oh, you ain't that yeah, bad. Yeah, that's right, why niggas right. go tiptoe at the back door. That's yeah, why niggas, it's they're tough, it's it tough man. It's the girls, tough, bro. I mean. Most of the time, they don't have any thing to lose necessarily. In I'm not going. I, I think not they, as they much. Don't, they don't not. not yeah, they don't, they don't have, have as much to lose. To lose. In marriage. They don't have as much. It's really just the love. Then that's and it. And that's man. why marriage takes so long. They say, "Why he didn't want to marry me?" What? Like it's a lot that goes through right here. None of us are married here, but I know in that space, it's a lot that goes to your head when you like. All right, you you do your vows, and this is about to be the lady of my life, the woman of the rest of my life. I gotta think this through first. I gotta, I gotta make sure that this is it for me, man. That's so take it, ladies. Take it, take your time, and don't rush it, man. Because we are thinking, and we're trying to figure out, like, is this the end? This is the end of everything. So let, let's <laughs> give, let's give, let, let's not just point the finger. Let's give ladies some real game from a male perspective, because okay, I know a lot okay. of, I know I'm a lot that. of women I'm probably that. think that. Oh, I already know what men want. Meanwhile, they have no <laughs> idea. But there are a few humble aware women who will take the time to listen to for what sure. men actually what would it take for you to actually marry somebody just to, i know uh, we can't go to full this what, what would be like two things what would be one thing that'd be like that would make you say nah we can't nah i'm probably not gonna marry her what's one thing that you that <laughs> kind of takes shorty off your list you want to take this podcast there let's take this podcast there let's try to be let's try to be respectful because <laughs> right, we're, right, right, right. we're trying not, to get we're game we're not pointing um, fingers we're not gonna tell nobody they look like a running back you know what i'm saying of course of course <laughs> um your sexual history and if i know about it i'm sorry to say mm. it, but men this is what men look at your past women look at your future it's like you were saying at the, at the beginning of the podcast when you had now clip I'm clip. women look at that's a clip what you have going they they you know how girls be, oh he's so he has goals he has aspirations he is about to get this job that's what they look at and they're attracted to our aspirations and goals men we're attracted to knowing that you had no history before me I hope that I don't know that you did this with my homeboy or you was out and about in your college days. We are attracted to their past and hopefully that is null and void. They are attracted to our future and what we may be. And most relationships, women will break up with a dude because like they got with him and then he got stagnant. And he's like, oh, he's not doing nothing now. He, he, got, he got complacent. He ain't about to be nothing no more. So they'll leave and go to something better. Women are attracted to hypergamy, which is wanting to be with someone at the same level or better than them. Re financially spiritually physically they want somebody bigger and taller they want somebody smarter than them they want somebody that's better than them in those aspects I'm not saying they're not good but they want somebody that's better because if they i mean they would just get a girl not a girlfriend they would just get with their girlfriends if that was the case all of them pretty much same height same you know what i'm saying but yeah. they get with a guy because it gives them that sense of like 
you have somebody better to work with as a partner. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't think I don't think that's necessarily a knock on women either. Because if you nah, if you if you're looking, you should be you should look for somebody. If better. you're somewhat traditional and you want to be submissive, then you probably should have somebody that can lead you in those categories. Bro, and it goes back to modern day or even past day biology. As a woman, we're in, we're talking about like if you're in a. Uh, I don't know how to put it. If if we're out, not a jungle. I don't want to say a jungle. Where did where did like primal in our primal, primal state, right? State. Men and women, primal state. Women are not as able to survive in a primal state as men. Now, I'm not saying that you can't. If but we're fight, there's if only we're a fighting select few bears, and so, we're fighting. Uh, what's what's your, the natural causes of hurricanes and weather and stuff? It's hard for a woman to do it. Now, now on the, on let's, the not, let's not even say. Let's say want to. Yeah, they, they don't. They want. They want. They don't want, want to want fight to. a bear. You, you they don't want to go out and kill stuff. They don't want to go out and like bring food back to the house. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They, I'm willing they to go will, out. but I would say naturally, biolog biologically, they are not. That's not their their mo. They're not trying to do that. Exactly. Men, Forgive us for our patriarchal ideologies, yeah, but I'm willing to go out on a limb and say that majority of the women, majority of the heterosexual women, will not take pride in being <laughs> the being in a relationship with a man. Right. And being the one who has to kill the bear and get the food and bring it in back In modern home. day, they don't want to take pride in being with their man. And they're the one that has to go, you know, the bills are on them. And, you know what I'm saying, those those type of things are on yeah. them. As a man, we should take those responsibilities. And, you know, it's not all on the women. We got responsibilities, too. You can't be sitting in the crib while your woman is out working can't and doing be. that. Can't be. She's going to leave you for somebody who's going to help her out. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, it's going to at least be the same or better than her. So, it just goes back to biology bro like that's how we're made and that's how things have worked thus far i would say okay so let's reel this back to the original uh point of sexual history mm -hmm. oh yeah that one, was my main point no no, no yeah. it was a good great segue mm -hmm. one thing i will say that i've always said because you know a lot of young dudes on tiktok i hear yeah. them say this word body count body count where's your body uh, count yeah, and they say some they, right, say, some, they right. say some crazy stuff like oh three that's too many you up i'm gonna be like bro first of all you barely got three bodies so shut up you right, don't even right. know what this sex thing is for real shut for up sure. you know what i'm saying little one so th <laughs> the, the this is what i've always thrived upon having a low count is beautiful right that is beautiful that is beautiful i will not i do i will not uh un i do not undervalue that that is for value sure. however in terms of what tarnishes you as potential mm -hmm. for long-term success in right you know at least for me i don't want to i don't know how many people think like me you could tell me if i'm out there if i'm an outlier it is always who, mm -hmm. not how many. Okay. okay. Who? Right. If you got Lonzo a, Ball, you got okay. not not even not even you Lonzo, got them niggas on your list. I'm like <laughs> not even Lonzo Ball. It, it's I'm think about where we come from. Yeah. We, yeah, yeah, North yeah, yeah, Carolina, yeah. South Carolina. Right. We all college. We're in a fraternity, so mm, word gets mm, a man. Mm. Word around the frat travels fast. Boy. Right. It so. travels fast. So it who who. Is way more important. That's that's a fact. Who is way? Ooh, how many? How that's many do I know? Sure. How many do my boys know? Mm -hmm. Can, what, if this person could potentially get an invite, not even if they will come, if they will potentially get an invite to the wedding, hell no, and can't do it. It's, it's, it goes back to like if I bring you to some with the frat, like we hang with the bros, and the bros know you, but like when you walk in, they like dog, like <laughs> dog. Come on, that's a bad look for us. So, like you said, it just matters who. And ladies, you can't take back nobody's. I don't care. I've heard the I got a BBL now. He ain't fuck this body. Ladies, that's, that's cap. Who said that? Girls be saying that. They say who you ain't fucking nobody. You ain't fuck me. That was a Nicki Minaj ball. I think that was a Nicki Minaj. No, whatever. Ball. I, but I they they be thinking that's true. And I'm telling you, ladies, it's not. Because if you go somewhere and your fellas fellas know you from another time or another you, that's a little alarming. It's, it it, it is doesn't look alarming. good on us. It doesn't look good on us. When we bring you around, you want your chick to be, you want her to be like, yeah. You want to be proud of it. And whether, you, whether you, no matter how, um, no matter how disappointing it is mm -hmm. uh, for you to look at a man and for him to really value and really put, uh, have a, a cap on the expectations of your sexual history, there is a natural innate pride that he gets from saying that you, that no one's touched you. Block. And I know that ladies, you don't have that same luxury because a lot of the men that you want are a lot of times hoes are way more experienced, man. But sorry, that's <laughs> kind of how the cookie crumbles, crumbles you wouldn't a little want bit. us if we wasn't attractive and hadn't didn't have a little bit of experience yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. you don't want no joe Schmo. absolutely Absol absolutely you know what i'm saying and that's like you said it's how the cookie crumbles it's, it's a sad duality and there are just modern day um what's the word uh double standards double, standards, the, the double yeah. standards are real y'all we can't get into the club because we look good we can't get <laughs> on a yacht 
because we're if fine and we're 21. Never mind, never mind, Imagine never mind, that. Never Imagine never we mind, could mind. go to a uh, uh, go to Miami, like all of us, me, you, Jake. We go no money, but we on a yacht. We getting free food. We had the best club in Miami. We 21 years old. We have no reason to do that, but that's the that's the luxury that ladies have just by being pretty, pretty privileged. Now on the converse with us, there are things that come in our favor, like um, being able to have. A higher bike or just like be experienced and that not be a something that holds us back but rather something that sets us forward because it showed for us to have sex with with, with women we had to have some type of uh some type of something you know what i'm saying we had to be somebody yeah. these women ain't just open the legs to anybody so for us to even be able to do it shows that we have some type of something you know what i'm saying whether it be game class st- status whatever but here's a challenging uh here's a challenging point of view mm-hmm. and i'm gonna try to be as respectful and be un- as understanding as i present this what about i, I agree with a lot of what you said mm-hmm. what about the women who don't necessarily get to enjoy pretty privilege Wow, but there's still women that. But women still get respect. Women still get respect regardless. I feel like you don't have to be. Pre- I'm gonna open a door no, for no, women I mean, if you're pretty or I'm, not. I'm for the. Uh, uh, I don't feel like that's the case for all. I I feel like I can't help but feel like there's a a lot of the privileges that we say women have. Mm-hmm. I I feel like that's really pretty privilege. Versus uh, that, I feel like there are a lot of women who may not. I'm not even going to say that they're not pretty, they're not beautiful, but, but they're not socially looked at or treated as like one of a top but, tier. So they may not get doors held. They may not experience that favor. So they might not mm-hmm. experience, you know, the the favors of pretty privilege, and they don't get the the male, the masculine side. Because I think we we're blessed, bro. I, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, Women have a hall. The plight of a woman is tough. I know as a man, oh, yeah. no matter what, no matter how screwed up my life is, bro, mm-hmm. no matter how unblessed I am, I can outwork any detriment that I have. Right. No matter what ill life has given me or what yeah. ill I'm currently in, I can I can put this shit in overdrive and in you know work. five years if I work my ass off yeah. and I learn my ass off, bro, I can get out of it. Yeah. Versus as a woman, you can't really work your way out of. Or work your way to every single thing that you might fantasize about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That might be an assumption, but you know, let us know down in the comments, man. Let us know. That's a, it's a, hey, we we <laughs> took a love. We took a yeah, love. Yeah, we, we, we took it there. Love, and we, we kept it respectful. Hopefully, we, we didn't say anything offensive. I think these are just the harsh realities that we don't talk about enough. Yeah, pretty privilege. Um, what we like in women because they never ask us. They just assume that they know. But you see, that's the one thing I think we all agree that we didn't say nothing. Girls think like, oh, I'm a, ah, oh, fuck, I, I, I don't want to take it there. Uh, okay. I take it. Uh, Girls think some things matter to us that really don't, I would say. Uh, no, let, let's let let's be respectful. Let's take it there. I want, I'll go out. I'll step out on the limb. Let me let me check my camera. I will say, I will be the one to say this, right? Um, this once, again, once again, once again, <laughs> forgive me for my patriarchy. Forgive me. Forgive me. All right. Um, we are not so, misogynist. So we, we definitely are not misogynist. Um. I will say that a lot of the uh, it, it's very hard to be a woman, especially to be a black woman in today's society Heck and not yeah. experience an immense amount of anxiety. Heck yeah. So I believe that. But I will step out on a limb and say that um, a lot of the things that they blame men for in terms of the anxiety and the way how they look is not necessarily men that's placing them there. Mm, maybe if it's that's a good the, point. Maybe if it's the breast, maybe it's the butt, maybe it's the, you know, the unrealistic body shape. Right. I can understand you attributing that to men and how we pick our women and the women that we give attention to and the women mm. that we look at and like pictures on Instagram. Keep going. But Let that man things, cook. things like things <laughs> like, you know, makeup and, you know, foundation, eyeliner. I will give you ten dollars if you can walk outside and out of fifteen men, if three of them know the difference between eyeshadow and eyeliner, I'll give you two hundred dollars. Yeah. So a lot of that the the look the minuscule things that you know you probably take into account and you notice it isn't necessarily for other men. It's not for men that you're doing it for. It's right. really for either yourself yep. or for women. So that right. is where that pressure is. It, I don't I will go out on a limb and say, before, you know, a couple years ago, a man really didn't understand understand what what it meant for your wig to be lifted we a lace front we or really didn't understand it. Or all that stuff y'all do like we yeah. don't know i see y'all do them videos where y'all you know what i'm saying like y'all be looking like me and y'all turn into somebody else that's great for you <laughs> but i don't really care about that <laughs> i don't really care y'all be like, yes you do i don't i don't and that, i think if we did a mass survey of men men would not you see none of the things we said about marriage 
I didn't mention makeup once. Now, it's great that y'all do it. We love that y'all like to look mm-hmm. beautiful and you want to beautify yourself and you want to be the best you and that you can be. you just feel good, too. Yeah, when it's you. I, and that's the thing, too. Like, just like when you get a new haircut, fellas, you know, something like, we feel good. Absolutely. But it's not uh, a deal breaker. Your makeup is not a deal breaker. You know what I'm saying? And I want to take I want to take that uh, I wanna, and I want to take another pivot. <laughs> this is how I've all I've I've told you know people who are my little brother and people who I've considered as my little brother and you know times mm-hmm. I've just said I'm not even sure people actually took it as well as advice but this is how I always thought mm-hmm. when someone asked me like oh uh, rate her you know which uh, rating mm-hmm. girl one to ten is kind of yeah but subjective. rate her or very subjective or how is she bad do you think she's bad or right. oh I'm considering this girl how pretty do I think she is <laughs> I don't judge how great a woman looks by her ceiling on the day that she's at the club the birthday makeup she has the nice weave she's completely done up i judge how good you look by how you look busted <laughs> three hours later that night when you're throwing up your wig is crooked <laughs> you, you you wake up in the morning your breath is terrible right, if you right. if i wake up in the morning and smell your breath and i'll be like god damn yeah. she's still bad though her right. breath just stink. that's when i know because all you're the bad, girls you know what I'm saying? go to the club every girl in there bad it's, so they it's, took uh, three hours, four hours to get ready, and you got on the shortest dress possible. Now, we love it for y'all. We love that for y'all. Y'all look great. We love that. Yeah. But he, what he's saying is we're not judging that off. We're not, yeah, not, not deal breaking. Yeah, that's not, that's not going to be a... Uh, that's not that's not going to weigh out of any decision except for the decisions made that night. <laughs> that, that night, and then they gonna hit us with this. But y'all be liking their pictures, and y'all be we do. Instagram is just for that to like pictures, <laughs> ladies. I I, I, I I hate to say it, but like I think ladies take and this makes your point more true. I think ladies take too much into um what we see on Instagram and what men like on Instagram. Of course, yeah. if we go in on Instagram and it's this and that, of course we're going to double tap, double tap, double tap. But that doesn't mean that we are infatuated and we want to change our life for this woman. We want to be with them now. I just like the picture. I like how she looked right then. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's not a big deal. The depth, the depth of the infatuation is completely different. And I think that's mm-hmm. where, um, I think women right. know this, but I don't know if they, they know this subconsciously, but right. I don't think they actually think about it when they see men liking pictures. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, if you're in a relationship relationship and your man's liking pictures then that's your standard you do what you got to do but in For terms sure. of overall there's a guy you like he likes somebody else's pictures don't take it to heart because th- the infatuation level is different men don't have they don't i, I think there's a assumption that oh if you're liking those pictures you, you might like you, must, you like hers and that's the type of woman you want to be with nah. no that is simply a physical situation i n- strictly physical. i don't know nothing about this girl i don't know if she's every, smart exactly I don't know if she can cook every thought is physical mm. every thought is physical True. no e- even when you go up to a girl at the club and i feel like there's an expectation that sh- that you should be interested in in more than how she looks when right, that's right, right. all you can do if you don't talk to somebody when you're looking at you liking a picture on instagram it's literally how good do you look and the, mm-hmm. are you attractive and let me is say the, not to cut you off go ahead, go ahead. um first impressions are everything and that's what it is when you go to the club that's your first impression of what that girl is, how she looks. And, you know, it's sad to say, but we do judge off of how people look. We judge books by their cover. It's not mm-hmm. supposed to happen, but you know it. You, If you didn't feel like that, you would go out and you would just be wearing sweatpants and a baggy hoodie. Mm. But you know your first impression. You might see somebody out, ladies who are saying, you might see your man at the gas station. Mm-hmm. Fellas, we go out, we might see someone we potentially want to be with. Anytime, but I, I'm I'm with that on the male and female. I think you should go out as your first impression and always look good. Job mm. interviews, gas station, anywhere. I'm not going out looking any type of way because you might run into someone and you might have you know what I'm saying? Man, Anything could happen, bro. You got to gotta be careful. I, I'm, I'm truly sitting here Mister to, next to Mr. No Cap because I'm not that way. I'll go out looking <laughs> bummy, man. You catch me on the wrong day, it's, uh, man, it's I mean, it happens. Sport, man. No, 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 no. You do that. No, no, no. I know, I know that I have something to do. I should care. Right. More, and I don't care. And it's and I'm walking out the house looking at myself like Jabril, you should be ashamed right now. <laughs> but I'm like, man, but something in my soul is just like, man, fuck, fuck <laughs> man, fuck it. you know what I'm saying? Like, but, I told Brill I was gonna come in here dressed up. And one of some of these podcasts I am. But okay. nonetheless, that's just like and this is a personal thing. And yeah. that's same with the people watching, same with the people listening. You might be one of those people that feels like Brill, there's nothing wrong. You might feel like someday like shit, I'm just I'm cooling. Cooling. I man. have those days. Some people might go out Comfort. every time I go out. I'm looking good. I know people like that. It's like every time they go, I'm like, all right, bro, you ain't had to, you ain't had to put this on. You put that out. shit on to yeah, go to the store. To go to the store, yeah, bro. bro you like, came over. This a kickback, bro. You doing, <laughs> man? <laughs> but to each his own on that, man. We not knocking nobody for what they do. Nobody for what they choose. Women, we not knocking you for what you going for. Men, we not knocking you for what you going for. Everybody has their preferences. 
as rightfully should. We should all be able to have a preference and we shouldn't be judged for our preference, I feel like. Absolutely. On any on any atmosphere, in any world, we should all be able to like what we like, go after what we like, and 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 conquer what we like. Absolutely. And this is a pro woman podcast. We do believe mm-hmm. that this is a man's world, but it would this be absolutely <laughs> it would be it would be absolutely this the second part is they don't they don't talk about the second they part. They don't talk about the second, but they gonna clip it that. Would, they this, gonna clip this that. is a this is a man we believe wholeheartedly this is a man's world, but it is nothing absolutely nothing without a woman or a girl bro <sighs> men would be on the world fighting each other to the death if we didn't have women <laughs> bro it, it'd just be a bunch of fighting and a bunch of just dick swinging competition niggas <laughs> yo, would just what? be trying to <laughs> pause <laughs> yo. niggas would just be trying to be like yo I'm, I'm bigger than you bro Take the gym for instance. That's all it is in the gym. Niggas just going there to show how much you can let. Yeah. It'd be pure violence, bro. It'd be pure, pure boredom. The and world violence. would be violence if it wasn't for you women bringing your femininity to the world and just being even, who you are. I don't even think we would have a society because think about it. No, no man, no man really sat down <laughs> and was like, you know what, I'm gonna build a building. He didn't say that. He said, you know what, I want to protect my wife and kids, my woman and my children. So I'm, so gonna, I'm build. gonna build. It, 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 yes, absolutely. That's, that's I believe what it came that. From. That's I what it came that. from, man. Let's 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 get off the ladies, man. Let's get off the ladies, man. It's a little too relationshipy. That's like yeah, four we, million that's relationship not, podcast. That's not our uh, our mo here. We said we was gonna stay away from it, but sometimes it's just natural convo. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely natural convo. But the words, if you were to come, we want we want guests to come. So if you want to yeah. uh, expound or you have something you want to say back, and just not the comments. So definitely hit us up. DM the page. DM Stero. DM me. And I think this is a great time to mm. shout out. Our sponsor brands. Oh, absolutely. Shout out No Cap the Label. We start with our own brands. We start in the house. Shout out Amen. No Cap the Label. This is a one on one. You know what it is. The hardest in clothing for men, women, children, anybody, any piece you need. We got hats, tees, varsity jackets, hoodies, anything you need. Sponsored by No Cap the Label. We do it all. Come shop with No Cap the Label. Man. I might, you I might, uh, I might wear the next guest we have. I might wear my No Cap hoodie, man. I might That's, wear mine too. And it, I got this. I got this on today. And this is also. Brought to you by Rich Royals. Oh, Rich Royals Luxuries, the, the richest, richest, the richest <laughs> natural hair care brand, man. Listen, if your hair curls, if your hair kinks, what you need is moisture. Mm-hmm. Ladies, what you, you can need, get into. You can tell you how. To, y'all see. Y'all, finish y'all, your topic, and I'm gonna tell you what. Y'all see what's going. Look at look Ooh. at this, man. Look at this. This is um. This is. Listen, what you need is moisture. Now there are different types. Little, little slight game, right? You know what I'm saying? The porosities, the curl type. There's so many different. Listen, if your hair kinks or curls, mm-hmm. if you can achieve moisture. Now, how you achieve moisture is differently, but achieving moisture is the number one goal. Mm. And what better way to achieve moisture than the Royal Hydration Treatment by Rich Royals? <laughs> it is a daily moisturizer. Yeah, it is an amazing. It has amazing slip. So it is somewhat of a some would say a deep con- de- uh, detangling conditioner. Mm. And then it is one of the most powerful deep conditioners there are in the world. It's not too thick, not too light. Smells amazing. And look at my hair, bro. Look like let's be real. I mean, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna I'm gonna hey. I'm gonna flex on. It. I'm gonna wear a perm probably if we get episode fifty. Uh, episode fifty. Y'all heard it here. Episode, episode 50, fifty. Bringing the perm silk, out. Silk press. Silk Let me tell you this. We went out to eat after the first podcast. Girl came <laughs> up and was like, "Yo, Rich Royals." She said, I had hair like, she pointed, pointed at our homeboy, he got hair like me. I point, I had hair like him. And she had a full <laughs> head of hair. I swear, I lied to you not. I said, that this shit really be working. And I, I used it to, I used the beard. Um, mm. He always blessed me with the beard, beard oil, the the uh, shampoo. Ooh. I got the conditioner. I'm mm-hmm. Rich Royals. My bathroom was all Rich Royals. I'm not capping. I've been using it for a minute. It brought my beard and everything. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was telling like, bro, I need some some stuff. Jarris used it too. You know what I'm saying? We all, saying? we all, we all rich royals. And likewise, I need, I need some more no cap because I let somebody borrow my no cap hoodie and uh, I, he bought it back. I was scared I won't go see it again, man. Hey, look, I need some more. Hey, look, some no, more, cap no cap label, man. man. We we global, and this might be a good time for a little break. We we, we taking one. We just go. Oh rock. man, I think I think I think we'd be good. We right here at an hour, good? man. I think we right here at an hour, man. So um, I think we can go ahead and we can go ahead and wrap this up, man. I appreciate you guys, man, for watching, man. Okay. Big Pink, I appreciate you, man, for holding down the. I know he had to take a little bathroom break, man. For sure. Appreciate you guys for watching, man. Well, you got any closing words, man? Nah, we want to keep it short. We want to keep it short and concise. We got more episodes coming, man. This is we appreciate y'all, all the people that hit me up on on Instagram or in person. So y'all listen to the podcast. I went to the, the YouTube. All the people that's following the page. We got a hundred followers on the page now. Woo! So Progress. Just, let's just keep running it up, man. We got more to come. We got more content. We are gonna have guests on soon, ladies. We would love to have y'all here. Then we're not going like. 
debate in a bad way. We're just going to have intelligent conversations. Absolutely. Y'all tell us some stuff we need to know and vice versa. Fellas, we're going to have y'all on. We'll, we'll have a little guy talk. We're going to have business owners and creatives and people that are working in their industry and mastering it. We want to have y'all in here y'all's perspective and y'all can put y'all's perspective out to the world and yeah. tell it on podcast i mean uh, apple podcast and youtube and instagram we want to hear from y'all the whole thing man maybe one episode one episode we may dedicate we may dedicate to just a relationship talk and we'll get some people right, in here right. and let them go, let them go crazy man but yeah. before you come out here understand that here <laughs> at this podcast here yeah the epicenter where it's thorough said we have water we have lights we have plants <laughs> like yeah, you said last, that, last episode that. the words table even though we, we're the only ones that can say the word table in uh-huh. reference to a literal table, the word alpha male, city mm. girl, it is banned. Banned. We will end the show, kick you out, and restart over again. Scratch it, scratch the whole thing. We're not trying to be that. It's enough of that out here. We want to have good combo. It's conversations we can have intelligently. Absolutely. Intelligent. And we can both get our points across. We can agree to disagree, but we'll never get there if we never have the conversation. And it starts in love. Love. And ends in love because Valentine's Day is on the way. Love, That's man. how you wrap it all the way, love. like a bow, like a bow, we like got a bow. Show up like a Ooh, damn bow. Man. Make sure y'all subscribe on YouTube, man. Blow the comments up, Instagram clips. Blow the comments up. Make sure you check us out on Apple Podcasts, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spotify. We'll be on all the other our heart, almost all of those yeah. platforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, by the end of the week, man. We appreciate you guys. This is gonna be a long ride, man. We're gonna be consistent, serving y'all up, man. So Fair thank me. you. Thank you for watching, man. And uh, that's a wrap, man. This is the episode of Yeah! Yeah!